Hello and welcome back to the Early Modern Warfare Podcast. Uh, in the last episode we went over uh, the initial campaign by Charles VIII of France into Italy in the late 1490s. Just to recap, he died in 1498 and his successor was his cousin, Louis de Orléans, who became Louis XII. France's occupation of, Mil of Naples, excuse me, had been somewhat successful, uh, but ultimately uh, they had been unable to press claims on Milan, which is something of particular importance to Louis. He uh, had also managed to defeat, Charles had also managed to defeat the large armies of the League of Venice at Fornovo and Seminara. Now, in the mid-1490s, the Italian situation got a little more complicated because Ferdinand I of Spain, uh, of the famous Ferdinand and Isabella, uh, pressed his own claims on Naples and did not recognize the king of uh, the kingdom, of the kingdom of Naples, Frederigo, as its rightful heir. And an additional new variable was the intervention of Maximilian I, the Habsburg Holy Roman Emperor, into Italian affairs in a much larger way. So the emperor tried to impose peace between Pisa and Florence when war between them broke out in 1495. Uh, however, he lacked enough troops and his expedition was unsuccessful. Now this Pisan conflict was important uh, and it is seen as maybe minor compared to the French invasions, uh, but it also typified uh, the type of warfare in Italy at this time. There's lots of maneuvering, raiding, and mercenaries that like to prolong the conflict as much as they could. Uh, the Pisan War wasn't just a local dispute, though, uh, because you had Venice, Milan, and Genoa who had their own interests. But back in France, Louis XII, who was preparing for a new expedition to Milan, Pope Alexander VI, the Borgia Pope that we mentioned in the last episode, uh, discussed an arrangement with the king to have his son Cesare Borgia established as a secular lord. Uh, up until then, he had been a cardinal, a lay cardinal, I believe, uh, in the Curia. Uh, in exchange, the Pope promised to annul uh, Louis' marriage so that he could marry Charles's widow and, and secure Brittany in his own personal lands in France. Cesare delivered this papal dispensation for the arrangement in October 1498, and Louis's wedding was scheduled for January. Uh, Cesare married a French uh, noble woman named Charlotte de Albert, uh, but the stipulation for this was that in their in the marriage contract, the Borgias uh, agreed to assist Louis with campaigns in Naples and Milan and that would be the army of the Papal States. Like Charles, Louis also secured France's border before undertaking this new Italian campaign, so he renewed a treaty with King Henry VII, uh, negotiated with Ferdinand and Isabella, and also put down an, a Habsburg incursion that attempt to take Burgundy. Louis also negotiated truces with Venice and Savoy, further protecting him for when the time came for the actual invasion. So as you can see, Louis is securing all of his flanks and directing all of his energy on Italy. He also undertook important reforms for military finance, and this is a really critical aspect of warfare in the period. European states really had problems raising enough money for armies, and they had to come up with new financial instruments, new methods of taxation, and new revenue streams to... Uh, build these armies. They were very expensive. So rather than place the cost burdens on capturing the Milanese treasury, he instead uh, raised enough money so that by April of 1499, he had enough that he estimated would suffice for about two years of campaigning. And he also secured a treaty with the Swiss to raise as many regiments as he needed. Meanwhile, in Milan, the Duke, Ludovico Sforza, uh, was preparing his own defenses as he was 
no doubt aware that Charles, that Louis, excuse me, wanted to invade. Initially, he went to Maximilian I von Habsburg and paid one million ducats to secure imperial protection, but the emperor didn't really give him much. He also tried to buy the support of the Ottomans in order to tie up the Venetians in a naval war, although this was unsuccessful. Uh, as we'll see later, the Venetians helped the French in, the inv in this invasion of Milan. His final gambit was trying to pay off Louis, Louis, but this also failed. These attempts at uh, which he might call ducat diplomacy only uh, distracted the duke from what he probably should have been doing, which was improving the army. Uh, and his army was quite small and it numbered only a few thousand men. Louis didn't begin his campaign until August of 1499, and his army numbered about 30 to 40,000 men. He planned on a lightning march into Milan and wanted to press for battle instead of sieges. The sieges would have would sap his army and keep him tied down. Uh, Ludovico Sforza planned on a kind of a delaying tactic or strategy to keep Louis bogged down at the forts and doing costly sieges that were very uh, resource intensive. So his main forts were Alessandria and Pavia. Alessandria was closer to the French border and Pavia was further to the east, closer to the actual city of Milan. But the French had another advantage in that they had a lot of artillery. Uh, they bombarded uh, a fortress called the Rocca de Arazzo, which was close to Asti, which you may remember from the previous episode. Alessandria surrendered after a few days, and the French ent entered Milan on August 29th, with most of the Milanese troops fleeing. And in the east, the Venetians were advancing uh, into Milan. Louis personally entered the city on October 6th, and the duchy came under French direct rule, which later incited riots. The French conquest was rapid and successful because of the weakness of the Milanese army and their use of artillery. The introduction of heavy cannon and the Trace Italian fortresses became an arms race as the century progressed. The Trace Italian fortresses were, um, uh, they had angled walls uh, and they were reducing the blind spots and they gave the defenders clear fields of fire for artillery and small arms. And this new design, which um, had started in late 15th century Italy, but as we'll probably see as uh, we go through this, the Italian wars, there's a big building project in Northern Italy uh, because these small states need them to protect against French invasion. And these fortresses are, are, were a lot different from medieval castles because medieval castles had a high but thin, uh, they called it a curtain wall. Uh, and what that did was that uh, was able to stop infantry. Um, and that since that was the main opponent you would face at that time, uh, since siege engines and, and, and artillery like trebuchets and catapults were kind of costly and the nature of medieval warfare didn't really lend itself to long sieges. Now, by the time of the Renaissance, and as we get into the early modern period, that changes dramatically, and we see armies that are able to operate for much longer periods of time and have a much greater uh, ability to conduct these sieges. All right, so back to what's going on with Ludovico Sforza. He raised a new army and try and fight back, and he's able to, he was able to recapture a few c cities. And by February the 2nd, he dislodged the French garrison in Milan. And he then tried to make amends with his subjects, showing his humility and stressed the need to defend Milan from both France and Venice. France still had garrisons in Novara and Montara, and Louis responded by sending more men to reinforce Novara. The French commander, La Tremolie, moved the French army on Novara in April 8th, 1500. Sforza had his men deployed outside the city, and the Milanese army 
had light horse on the left and infantry on the right. After some brief skirmishing, the opposing infantry collided. The Milanese front rank of Italians began to break, and the Swiss and Lansconics in Milanese service did not want to support them. And to make matters worse, uh, after the army, after Sforza's army limped back to the city, uh, the Swiss and Burgundian troops went over to the French side and to join uh, the Swiss to join their Swiss counterparts and the Burgundians with the uh, French troops. So Swartz, uh, along with one of his brothers, ultimately ended up captive in France, and the French army, uh, which had been incensed at the restoration of Ludovico by the Milanese, looted and murdered civilians. The French also demanded steep payments from the cities within the duchy. Uh, so, for example, uh, they demanded 800,000 ducats from Milan itself, and the French reorganized the occupation government into a military, essentially a military government. Uh, ironically, uh, neither Louis nor uh, the nobles that were granted lands because of this conflict uh, stayed in the duchy very long. Uh, Louis only visited a handful of times, even though he had an obsession with capturing Milan. And, uh, but nevertheless, uh, it was a much more solid consolidation and incorporation than uh, what uh, Charles VIII had done in Naples, which, um, if you'll remember, he was not able to hold it for very long. So, uh, that's a brief episode for today, and uh, in the next episode we'll look at uh, the French interaction with uh, the other states of Italy, such as Florence and uh, Pisa, I believe, and uh, Thank you for listening, and um, please uh, leave feedback in the uh, video if you enjoyed it. Thank you.